Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Matt Bowles here from Maverick Investor Group. I'd like to welcome everybody to a very special webinar event here that we have for you tonight. My name is Matt Bowles. I'm one of the founders and partners of Maverick Investor Group. And I'd like to just start off by uh, giving you guys a little bit of a overview. Um, if you have not been on a webinar before, you have a control panel on your screen there. And that is going to allow us to interact with each other throughout the webinar. So, for example, there's a question box there. And at the end of the webinar, after we've presented the content, you're going to be able to ask questions. And you can type them into the box, and we will read them out and hopefully be able to get to as many of them as we can at the end of the event. You also have a hand icon there. It looks like a hand, and that allows you to raise your hand uh, so that we can interact with you guys during the webinar. So let's check it out, for example. Um, let me ask this as an opening question. How many people have been to a Maverick Investor Group event before? You've been on a Maverick webinar before. Raise your hand um, if you have been to one of our events before. Okay, great. So we'd like to, first of all, welcome back, of course, all of our uh, uh, active clients that come to a lot of these events. Uh, but we'd also like to extend a special warm welcome to all of the first-time visitors here to the Maverick community. Uh, basically, what we do is we help real estate investors to buy turnkey real estate investment properties in different markets around the country. But we also uh, are building a community. And that means that we also try to provide you with items of value, with tools, with resources, with information that can help you in your real estate investing. Uh, and help you to be a better real estate investor. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing here tonight. So what I want to do is just start off real quickly with the problem or the challenge that has historically existed in this particular space. Okay, And I want to talk about three costly mistakes that real estate investors make when estimating long-term rental income. Okay, These are three mistakes that real estate investors commonly make when trying to estimate long-term rental income. Number one, failing to understand the actual market rent for the individual property address at the time that you purchase it, okay? So, for example, a seller may project a market rent or estimate, here's what they think the market rent will be. Well, that's often woefully overestimated to try to make the cap rate or the cash on cash return look better for the purpose of selling the property. OK, so you need to understand the actual market rent. And even if there is already a tenant in place when you're buying the property, still sometimes that tenant might be paying over the market rent. Maybe they're not a qualified tenant um, and they agreed to pay a higher rent to get in the property, but they might not stay there very long if they're not qualified. And so you need to know what you're going to be able to re-rent that property for if and when it goes vacant in the future. Number two. Failing to understand the localized vacancy rate for the micro market where your property is located at the time that you purchase it. Okay, Understanding real estate investor dynamics, how much rental demand is there for the property that you have, and, and what is the vacancy rate? Okay, What percentage of the properties like yours are currently vacant? That's really important to understand when you're trying to analyze how long will it take you to re-rent the property uh, and how much of a vacancy allowance should you factor into your cash flow analysis over time? And finally, failing to understand the strength of the rental market and which direction the rental rates are trending in the micro market where your property is located. Okay, Is there an increasing amount of rental demand because there's population moving in uh, and there's a higher demand for properties like the one that you own? Or is there a declining amount of rent because maybe population is decreasing, people are moving away, or perhaps a institutional investor just came in and bought a whole bunch of rental properties and put them all in the market at the same time, and now the market is, uh, is saturated and the rental prices are going down. Okay, What types of trends and factors are at play that are affecting you know, where the rental market is going and how much rent um, – uh, you may be able to get in the future. So understanding trends uh, is really important when you're trying to uh, do your own cash flow analysis and make your own projections um, about what's going to be a good cash flow property for you as a buy and hold investor. 
So the historical challenge to over overcoming these mistakes is that there has simply been a lack of data depth and data quality to accurately assess this information, okay? So here's a quote I just wanna read you from the Progress in Lending Association. Prior to rent range, there's been no standardized repository for single family rental data. Even the national MLS uh, information contained far too few transactions to be relevant as a standalone resource. Before rent range, data was subjected subjective it lacked data depth and quality and it failed to produce statistically sound okay that's important statistically sound uh, results okay so let's talk about the solution and that's why i have my special guest here tonight uh eric taylor who is the president of rent range the team at Rent Range, and I've known the founders of Rent Range for years, and I've watched them develop this model. And it's been quite an incredible uh, journey, but they very astutely recognized this huge void uh, that was there and the inability to accurately uh, come up with this information, which was really crucial to real estate investors. And so since 2008, 2009 period, they have been actively working to fill this void and come up with a solution uh, which has completely changed the game for real estate investors. So uh, we are really excited uh, to have with us tonight the president of Rent Range, Eric Taylor. Eric, welcome and thank you very much for being here with us. Thank you, Matt. Thanks for having me. So let's start off with a little bit. Just talk to us about uh, about how Rent Range you know, identified this void and what you guys have done, what you guys have put together to fill this void for real estate investors? Sure. Um, many years back, our, our founder, Wally Charnoff, uh, you know, was involved in another uh, startup organization, and uh, it was really all about slicing and dicing uh, data and analytics, you know, for smaller investors. And uh, he saw a huge void with the use of HUD data uh, and confronted the folks and said, listen, uh, I think there's a better way. I think there's, you know, more integrity and more accuracy capable. And uh, in turn, they, you know, eventually got to the point there where they, um, you know, became a, uh, you know, uh, the first user uh, of the rent range solution. And if the company has essentially built off of that and evolved and, you know, become the largest, most comprehensive data warehouse in the country of single-family rental market data. So, um, again, that, that information was, you know, five years back when no one was thinking uh, about single-family rentals and, and the market that we have today. Uh, so it was more of a visionary approach, and uh, it's, today it's right time, right place, and right combination of information and, and solutions. So uh, we're fortunate enough to, you know, be going back to 2009, uh, and we really deliver an assortment of geographical data, address level valuations, uh, statistical trending and soon to be forecasting tools uh, that can really help the investors analyze investment properties uh, at a much deeper level, level than they ever have in the past. Awesome. Now that sounds super complicated stuff. So what I want to do is I want to distill this down into the very specifics of exactly what rent range can do and can provide for individual real estate investors. So go ahead and talk to us about uh, about that. Sure. Um, on the individual investor side, um, you know, there's a couple of different components that are, are, are key to us. Uh, it's understanding the geography, number one. Um, and the performance and the history of the geography. And the second is being able to drill down to the address level and to come back with a high level of accuracy uh, to a monthly rent estimate tied to a confidence score. Very similar technologies as compared to the market value AVMs that you see out there from companies like uh, CoreLogic, uh, LPS, DataQuick, and folks like that. So um, we've essentially built a technology uh, that allows you to simply provide a street address uh, for the property, identify if it's a single family or multifamily class. We have two different sets of data, uh, you know, so it's always an apple to apple comparison. Uh, and then provide some basic information like a square footage, number of bedrooms, number of baths, things that an AVM model really needs uh, in order to, uh, to provide, you know, highly accurate results. Um, with that, we get an automated report coming back uh, within seconds uh, called the advanced report. 
and uh, it delivers monthly rent estimates, uh, as we talked about before, tied to the confidence score. Uh, we bring in third-party information, uh, HUD data specifically from Section 8 rental rates, so an investor can check the deviation uh, between, you know, the monthly rent estimate and what the threshold may be for a Section 8 voucher reimbursable. Um, the localized vacancy rate, which is really key to, to us, we, we work in a, uh, a fashion of uh, taking, you know, half mile increments uh, and working in a radius outward. So instead of providing the MSA vacancy rate, which we do make reference to, we have an algorithm that calculates a localized vacancy rate in your sub-market. And that really kind of gets you, you know, the dynamics of what's happening uh, literally within the immediate neighborhoods uh, around your subject property. Um, other factors uh, include, you know, saturation rates. Uh, you know, how many properties, you know, if there's, uh, you know, in the MSA, there's, uh, you know, how many properties are owner-occupied and how many properties actually are, uh, you know, occupied by renters. Uh, another key factor. Um, and then, again, Trending, we'll, we'll dive into this a little bit more when we, we take a, a closer look at some of the reports, but rental, tra rental uh, rate trends by zip code, city, county, and state. Uh, we'll bring back some comparable rental listings, and we'll give you benchmarks uh, to be able to do the comparison. But most of all, um, I think at the end of the day, what people want to know uh, from this report is not just the valuation amount, but what's the market strength? Where have we been? Where are we now? Uh, and again, as I said before, I made reference to the fact that we'll be coming out with some rental price indices in the future to provide one, two, three year and forecasting uh, outward. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about your customers and who uses rent range. So on the customer side, I mean, we have six or seven different classes of folks that utilize our technologies and our, our data today. Um, obviously, the institutional investors, you know, the REITs, the hedge funds, the private equity groups, uh, they're taking the information and uh, they're using what we'll call our macro data. We're not going to really get into that today, but that's the underlying core data that's necessary uh, to find performing and non-performing geographies, uh, you know, where to buy, what to buy, um, how long to hold, when to exit and using it for investor reporting purposes. Um, fulfillment services organizations like appraisal management companies, they're using it as a supplement to a BPO, an appraisal, a desktop, or even a simple inspection. Um, default service organizations, um, if you go to Fannie Mae and you go to HomePath, you'll see that there's a uh, radius report, uh, just a, a, sh a shelled down version um, of our reports that's available for every property that, there, that uh, is listed uh, you know, uh, on that site, and uh, again, it's very highly used now. Our reports are highly used by servicers and asset managers to identify um, alternative disposition, which properties qualify, uh, you know, for uh, disposition to investors based on their, we'll use the word, investability criteria. Um, property managers and landlords, that's a slam dunk. That's kind of the meat and potatoes. Uh, you know, folks on that side of the uh, on that side of the fence, and it's just a natural fit uh, to give them a baseline value and let them agree or disagree. And their role, really, as a property manager, let's say, is to take a look at condition and locational factors that would uh, influence the value uh, of the property. So, uh, big a big piece of the puzzle there is the rent range reports to use as a baseline. Uh, real estate professionals, appraisers and brokers, uh, you know, they're very highly engaged at this point and probably one of the, growest, the, the fastest growing uh, segments of, uh, um, of our business at this point. Um, mortgage lenders and financial institutions on the origination side. Anytime that there's a uh, two plus unit property uh, and an application goes in, they need a quick way to validate that uh, the estimated rents are accurate and within a level acceptable level of tolerance, uh, you know, for the marketplace, you know, from, from the time of application. Uh, last but not least, third party technology providers and value added networks. Um, you know, equators, the equators of the world and other uh, value-added companies that uh, aggregate and, and combine technology and uh, individuals in all parts of the, the business cycle. Uh, one that's not on there is the rating agencies and the Wall Street folks. Uh, they're using this data for uh, lending decisions and checks and balances for some of the institutional guys and as a basis for potential securitization of the REO to rental asset class. All right. So, uh, in short, my summary is that the big players and the big smart money 
are using rent range. This is becoming the industry gold standard, if you will, that is becoming incorporated um, into the uh, buying strategies of the multi-billion dollar funds uh, and others. So now individual investors and agents in the Maverick community are going to be able to have access to the same caliber of data. So let's talk about the three products offered by Rent Range to the individual investors um, in our community. That sounds great. So we have three different flavors of automated reports, on-demand reports, we'll call them. Um, a zip report, uh, a core report, and an advanced report. Um, I would say that the zip report is, you know, the highest level of information just to be able to scope out areas that, that may be of interest and, and find areas where, um, you know, prices are uh, either stable, increasing, or staying away from the ones that are decreasing. Um, the core report basically is an extension of the zip report, uh, but it, it essentially works off of, um, I would say, a radius type uh, methodology where it will search the radius, bring back uh, three comparables, and be able to view them on a map. The meat and potatoes of what we do really revolves around the advanced report. That's the only report that brings back a monthly rent estimate and a confidence score and all the other uh, components that we talked about before. Uh, Ten comparable listings, um, you know, it's going to bring back uh, other information on rental market strength and, and many other factors. So I would say that 85% of our business on the on-demand report side is revol revolves solely around the advanced report itself. Uh, they're on a credit-based system, so uh, when you work with Rent Range, you essentially log into the site and um, you are able to go forward and to use the credits that you purchase uh, in any combination uh, to be able to uh, uh, go forward and purchase these reports. And you know, the credits never expire. And uh, again, um, folks are are highly reliant on these uh, these reports for their diligence process and. Uh, you know, been, been very successful with the results. And so, and so the credits uh, system, just at, at the very basic level, if you're just going to uh, buy one or two of these reports, a credit is about three dollars per credit. So, a zip report report would be like three dollars. A core report would be six dollars, and an advanced report would be twelve dollars. Is that right? That is that is true. If you're coming and buying onesies, twosies up there, absolutely. Yeah. But if you are a, a higher volume user, let's say, and you do a lot more of in investigative diligence, you can get discounts all the way down to the purchase of 400 credits, uh, down to a dollar 25 uh, a credit, uh, which really, for an advanced report, that brings your cost from 12 dollars down to five dollars. So, and again, those credits don't expire. So, a lot of folks, you know, tie in, get the get the credits, put them in the bank, and use them accordingly over time. All right. So what I want to do here is I want to take a, a close-up look at a rent range advanced report. So a, a lot of the stuff we've been talking about is kind of abstract. Uh, and for people that aren't really into data and numbers, kind of like me, uh, uh, sometimes our eyes sort of glaze over as we're <laughs> talking about a lot of this stuff. So what I want, I want you to do is two things here as we start to talk through. And, and we're going to show you exactly what you get, uh, what this advanced report produces. And then we're going to show you how you can pull – an advanced report uh, right now on this webinar uh, in, a, in about five minutes uh, for any U.S. street address that you want. Okay, so as we start going through and showing you what's in an advanced report, I want you to be thinking about a particular address that you are, are about to get all this information for. Okay, so when you hear this information, imagine that in five minutes you're going to be able to apply it to any address you want. So that could be an investment property that you already own. Uh, which uh, it could be the property where you live. It could be a property that you're thinking about buying and you're currently doing your due diligence on. Uh, whatever it may be, just think about that property that you're about to get all of this information on that property that you uh, are interested in, uh, in looking at. So let's talk through this. So the first thing is we're going to send you uh, uh, in five minutes, we're going to send you to a link where you're going to enter your information and then this is this is what it looks like and this is all you have to enter to pull an advanced report you click on it you see the advanced section is highlighted there you just type in the property address the zip code the square feet of the property numbers of bedroom and bath and what property type if it's a single family home and then just click request report and then immediately uh, up pops the advanced report and this is what you're going to get so go ahead and uh, talk us through this uh, eric 
Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, so once you log into the site, you create your user account, you validate that information, you get an email back that basically says, uh, you know, just for, for securitization, securitization purposes, allowing you to uh, validate who you are. Once you get that back, four credits will be added into your account, and you will be able to log in, plug that address in, and get your report. So there's a little bit of a process, so it might take you a minute or two to, to get yourself uh, in and set up. But once you do that, you plug in your address. Um, there's required fields of information, as we talked about before, uh, your bedrooms, your bath, your subject type. Remember, it's single family, detached, or everything else, that's the two segments of data that we have. Uh, in this case, in this report, uh, address was, was punched in. We came back uh, and uh, we did a radius search. We, we go in half mile increments uh, from the property's location and we, we uh, radius searched a mile and we came back with 74 comparables. Uh, so again, that was kind of the high level subject property information box and uh, you know, from there, as you work yourself through the report, you get different benchmarks, and we kind of put them to graph to kind of show you uh, what's happening, you know, uh, as a whole. So as you can see in the blue, you got the average rent within that one mile distance, within that, you know, 70 some odd, uh, uh, 74 comps that were found uh, of like type and bedroom. So those were all single family homes, uh, you know, with a three bedroom uh, count. The average rent within that area, uh, when that one mile is 850, the average rent for the zip code was 795. Uh, that was with the lows. Now the medians, again, 975, uh, 1,017, and our automated rent estimate basically came in at 1,050. Um, if you go to the high side, again, remember, condition, locational factors are very important here. Um, and uh, again, we're assuming that every single property that we put in here, because you know we can't validate, obviously, uh, condition and location are similar and typical of other properties in that competing neighborhood. So with that said, we're laying all this out for you so you can make a, a decision uh, as to, to where it lies, knowing the condition of your property and how it, how it stacks up to other properties in that area. I think one of the most important pieces here for many is in, depending on your geographic region, we put a Section 8 bar in. So you can actually see, uh, you know, the, the line for the, uh, the voucher uh, to be able to figure out, you know, is there any room between, you know, what uh, the automated rent estimate is and, and the top dollar that you can get uh, if you do decide to, you know, enroll and, and work through those programs. So with that said, we'll move to the next section. Uh, which is rental market intelligence. This is this is the good stuff. This is this is why folks uh, utilize the advance report. All of the the basic information that you're really going to need. The fuel uh, is here within this one section. Uh, we talked about the automated rent estimate, a thousand and fifty dollars. We talked about tying in that to a confidence score. Now. Again, um, we talk about all the different things, but confidence score is calculated at the report time. Um, it's a predictor of the accuracy of the rent estimate and tells you um, basically based on the algorithm, the methodology, and the available data, you know, um, you know what we believe that property would rent for, uh, you know, and what percent confidence, um, you know, that that reflects. So the higher confidence scores reflect consistent quality and quantity of data uh, and tighter geographic sample ranges. Lower represents increased diversity in data, lower quality of data uh, and quantity of data, and limited similarity to the subject property that you're comparing it to. So again, it fluctuates accordingly. Um, the median rent, the low rent and the high rent, obviously, the low area rent um, basically is the uh, bottom 10 percentile. Uh, the median is the true median for the area, and the high rent is the top 90 percentile. Again, that's all reflective on the prior graphs that were just shown. Uh, the Section 8 bar uh, number, again, that translates to a, a, a figure here on the 1363. That was a gold bar on the previous screen. Uh, here's a, an important one, subject size versus comps. The subject that we have provided is larger than 36 percent of the comparables. Um, you know, that's that's... You know, it's important information when you're doing a comparison to figure out how your subject stacks up against the available comps to find out if you're over-improved or under-improved for the area. Um, property vacancy, uh, that is a proprietary algorithm that is used uh, that will allow us to go forward and to look at that radius and look at uh, other factors uh, in addition to the MSA uh, vacancy that's provided. 
uh, and be able to look at uh, the impact of uh, you know supply and demand and, and other factors uh, at that level. So that, that's a very very important one, especially for um, investors uh, you know today that that really need to know what that true number that they need to apply. Most people defaulted in the past to the MSA vacancy, uh, which came from census and ACS data. Uh, but again, we we've, we've refined this proprietary algorithm on the property vacancy side to be highly accurate and. And uh, and it's a very uh, very important figure. That's uh, that's, we, that's incredible, by the way, folks. That number alone, the property vacancy rate number, to me is worth the uh, you know the twelve bucks for the report is that that's worth it alone just to get that number. That is a distilled down uh, vacancy rate for the specific property that you enter in based on the comparables and the specific property. Radius. It's not a citywide vacancy rate or things like that. I mean, that is an incredible proprietary algorithm, uh, and that number, right, is really important because when you're factoring in a vacancy rate, right, you always want to factor in a vacancy rate to your cash flow analysis. So to be able to get that specific uh, is really, really unique. So uh, uh, go ahead, Eric. Sure, it's as local as local can get. Um, so, and again, the other factor that's really important here is the area rental market strength. We take into consideration multitude of different factors, and with that market strength, you know, we're going to tell you: is it poor? Is it fair? Is it good? Is it above average? And uh, that information is extremely important as well when analyzing a property for a potential future purchase. Right, and then that MSA sat, uh, rental saturation number, that's the percentage of renters uh, compared with the percentage of primary homeowners, right? That is absolutely correct, and that number doesn't reflect the single family. It's not broken out into single family and multifamily. It's an aggregate of the two, so that would include all single family and multifamily properties that have renters in them in that MSA. Okay, uh, but very important to, uh, to know that number as well. So as we work through again, we're looking at the rental rate trending. Uh, as I said before, we know where we've been and we know where we are today. Uh, but we analyze it for you in four different areas of geography, at the zip level, at the city level, at the county level, and at the state level. And uh, this is a pretty telltale uh, graph here because it's basically saying that you know the zip code is trending down over the course of the last uh, you know 12 months. It's, it's got a downward downward swing um, where the city and the county are in a you know in an upward so you know with that said um, again a lot of information can be derived and a lot of knowledge can be derived from you know really taking a look at the trending summaries and applying them to your local marketplace absolutely very important and this indicates it exactly right the rental rates are going up in Maricopa County they're going up in Peoria, but they're going down in this specific zip code in Peoria. So that shows you why the micro market analysis is so important when you're looking at specific investment properties. Subject comparables. Um, these are listings that were used. So we, we ripped through you know quite a few listings as you saw, you saw we had 74 listings I believe uh, in this report. We're going to show you you know 10 listings from that sampling in no in no specific order. Um, I think they're uh, based on distance. They're sorted by distance. But uh, again, these are all single family three bedroom properties, uh, and we were only able to show asking rents. People ask us a lot, can you put more information on, can you show effective rents, can you do this and that. Um, wish we could show the effective rents, uh, but unfortunately it's non-public information that you just can't go down to the town hall and get. Uh, so legal uh, opinions have prohibited us from going forward and sharing any effective rents. And with all of the partners that we obtain our information from, we need to protect uh, that information as well uh, for them uh, as data partners. Uh, we don't want their competitors to know their secret sauce, where they're buying, what they're doing, and what their plans are. They could very easily buy reports, map that out if if they knew what that asking rent was, and did a a backward search by uh, you know local town hall records and public records to figure out who the owners were. So um, you will see these are these are subject comparable listings, and uh, again, very important in the process. 
Absolutely. And also, you know, I want to mention here, too, that we have not only real estate investors uh, on the webinar tonight, but a, a sizable portion of the Maverick community is also real estate agents who serve real estate investors. And so, um, you know, this is extremely uh, useful when you are presenting information about a property to a potential real estate investor. Uh, if you're an agent and you can show comparables and you can show the estimated uh, market rents, vacancies, all that sort of stuff. This is really, really valuable supplementary information uh, for agents uh, to be able to uh, to share with their clients. And that really positions you uh, uh, far and away ahead of folks that are trying to pull, you know, a comp from here and a comp from there and, you know, do it sort of the old way. Uh, if you're able to present all this stuff, it's really a way to position yourself as an agent. Uh, and provide a lot more value uh, to your real estate investor clients. Um, okay, so the, it includes also the map of where the comps are and, and all this kind of stuff in the advanced report. Uh, let's move on to the, the third page of the advanced report. Sure. So the third page of the advanced report really is the historical historical rates over time. You know, you saw that uh, we were able to put those figures into uh, into a graph uh, and be able to plot them accordingly. Um, what's in, What's important about this is we were talking about a three-bedroom segment. We're also showing you uh, the 12-month history of, you know, ones, twos, and fours to show you where they're tracking uh, in accordance with each other. So sometimes you'll see crossover on three and four bedrooms. Sometimes you'll see, uh, you know, ones and twos kind of close together. Sometimes they're all over the place, but sometimes they're 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 pretty flat, like you'll see here. Uh, but this is very important to know what the competition is and, uh, you know, what the competition is doing from a supply and demand perspective in regards to, um, you know, ability to, um, you know, forecast and, and figure out, you know, am I in the right bucket? Am I in the right segment? Do I really need to take a look at fours before I start diving into threes? You know, maybe threes are, are fine, but fours are outperforming. So... Uh, this is the data, the underlying data um, that is plotted out on that previous graph uh, where we show you the median, the Section 8, the average square footage of one-bedroom uh, homes and apartments. So we go a little bit deeper here, and we're able to show you the homes and apartments uh, so you can do a direct comparison uh, to see what the spread is in between those two different type of classes and, uh, you know, be able to kind of, uh, you know, gauge accordingly. All right. So all, all great now... info. And now the fun part, folks, um, we are going to let all of you do this for free and pull a free advanced rent range report on any address that you want in the United States. So here's what you do. Go to maverickinvestorgroup.com backslash rent range. Okay. Maverickinvestorgroup.com backslash rent range. Now, that is going to ask you to fill in your basic information, uh, name, email address, uh, and so forth. Uh, and then it's going to send you, uh, you're going to get a confirmation email. So you need to fill in your information and then immediately open up your email, confirm your, uh, your address so they know it's really you. And then you're going to be able to go back to the site and log in. Uh, and uh, you're going to be able to just really simply, just like we showed you, to type in any address in the U.S. Uh, all you have to know is what square footage is it, how many bedrooms and bathrooms, and then just let them know is it a single family property or is it uh, something else? Uh, is it a townhome, condo, etc.? cetera? And uh, you just select that and then you just click the generate report and you can get a free advanced report. Make sure you toggle it to advanced report because that's the one that's got all the really good stuff uh, that you're going to find extremely valuable as an investor. So go ahead and do that now. Um, and then when you pull that up, um, again, I was saying, you know, you can do it for maybe an investment property that you own. Maybe you're pretty familiar with what the rent should be. So it can sort of be a test, if you will. Uh, and then we've got uh, we've got Eric here live on the webinar. Uh, and we're going to, in a few minutes, we're going to have a question and answer session. So you're welcome to uh, pull this report for a property that you're familiar with um, uh, as a test uh, or that you want to be familiar with. And even if you're familiar with it, like even if you know exactly the local rental market, like the back of your hand, this information on this report may actually provide, you know, things like the vacancy rate, things like the market saturation 
rate, uh, you know, uh, and, you know, updated, you know, to the day. Um, this may produce some some new valuable information, even if it's a property that you know really well. Um, so go ahead and pull that now. Uh, and what would be great is that everybody can have the report in front of them for the property that they're familiar with or that they're interested in. Maybe it's one you're in the process of assessing. You want to pull a rent range report on it. And then what we're going to do is uh, I've got one more quick segment here, um, and I'm going to have Eric talking through a couple more things. But then what we're going to do is open up the floor to question and answer. Um, and you guys can ask specific questions about anything you want, including what you find on the rent range report for your property. So uh, uh, go ahead and do that now. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to ask uh, Eric to talk through one more uh, set of details here uh, about the rent range uh, product. Uh, but you guys go ahead and go to maverickinvestorgroup.com backslash rent range. Fill in your info. Remember to go to your email and confirm your email address. And then it's going to let you log in and pull the advanced report. So while you're doing that, um, let's uh, talk about one final uh, thing here, Eric. I want to dive a little bit deeper uh, for people that want to understand this uh, at a deeper level. Some people might be saying, uh, hey, uh, I, I saw something similar on Zillow. You know, don't they do a rental estimate for me? Or, you know, people that are more uh, into the weeds of this stuff, they want to get a better handle on how you do what you do uh, in terms of the methodology uh, here. Talk to us a little bit more about the details uh, uh, behind the scenes uh, and what is making rent range so unique and so different from other things uh, people might be finding online. Absolutely. So again, why are we unique? Um, as I said uh, to start, we're the largest, most comprehensive and well scrubbed rental data warehouse in the country. Um, single family is our fastball and essentially you know, the information that we have has been collected for 52 months the same way, normalized. Uh, you know, checks and balances and, and, uh, you know, and loaded in a consistent fashion over that course of time. Um, so again, you know, uh, being able to, you know, collect that information, uh, report it, as you had said, in a, in a timely fashion. Our information is updated on a daily basis as we get it. We don't update once a month like a lot of other, uh, cost replacement models and things like that, but it is, uh, on the fly. You could, uh, you know, uh, get information on a valuation today and then new comparables would show up a week from now and, and have a impact, positive, negative, or indifferent on the value. Um, we talked about the uniform data collection process. Again, we know that there's no market lag because we're updating daily. Um, we talked about the two unique segments, single family and then the apartment condo townhome. Um, to your point, this is not a black box solution. We have, uh, you know, outputs that are credible and defendable. Uh, unlike some of the consumer focused uh, solutions that are out there today, uh, you know, they're designed as a black box. You really can't look under the hood and see what kind of engine it is and how many cylinders it's got and, you know, uh, what type of carburetor it's got or fuel injection or a blower. You don't, you don't have a clue. Um, and, you know, companies like that are really designed for one thing and that is eyeballs and, and advertising clicks. So again, you cannot manipulate uh, the results uh, as you can in a black box with our system. Uh, again, and we've been vetted by the best out there, the Fannies and the Freddies and you know, all of your top institutional investors, Wall Street guys and the rating agencies. So um, you know, there's a reason we're you know, called the gold standard out there in the industry today. It's you know, we have uh, put in the diligence into the product and into the process to make it happen. Uh, 52 months worth. Uh, so again, um, it's unrivaled and uh, the data points that we have are unique and uh, you know, the, the address level rent estimates and, and scoring tied to it, um, you know, really are the best that, that they can be uh, based on the information that's been provided. And uh, more importantly, you know, with, with about six years in this business now, um, we've learned things a long time ago that other competitors and folks who want to enter this business today are only going to learn about now. So we have that evolutionary advantage to be able to uh, say, I've been there and done that, and this is exactly why we do what we do, and you know, uh, we have the real-time example. So um, you know, that's really you know what makes us unique, and uh, you know, makes us special out in the marketplace. Other than being the right place, at the right time, it's the right combination. 
So with that, uh, we're going to open up the floor now to your questions. That was a lot of information. Let me just kind of check in with folks here. Uh, let's do the hand raise thing again. How many people was that a lot of information? Uh, how many people feel they're on sort of data numerical overload that that was a lot to ingest in, in 40 straight minutes? Okay, yeah, that sometimes happens. Um, I think when you get the rent range report for your um, – your property, you're going to be able to uh, really make a lot of sense uh, of this stuff. Um, so go ahead, if you haven't done that yet, um, go ahead and uh, and grab that report, maverickinvestgroup.com backslash rent range for any property address in the U.S. Uh, and now we're going to open up the floor. Uh, you can ask your questions to Eric about anything you've heard tonight, uh, anything you didn't hear yet tonight, uh, or um, anything that questions that arise from uh, grabbing that uh, report. Um, okay, so the first question, Eric, is how is the rental market strength related to vacancy rate? So obviously the uh, the vacancy rate and the strength are closely tied together. Um, you know, the supply and demand is tied in there as well, but, uh, you know, more importantly, the vacancy rate is a key factor, um, you know, in, in the strength uh, itself, uh, singularly and, you know, um, obviously as uh, – combined with other factors. So there's a direct correlation uh, in our system and in our algorithms to that point, as well as many others uh, behind the scenes, uh, you know, she, the amount she, of comps. She, she, and, actually, she actually asked a follow-up question, which says, I see a sure. condo that I have in L.A. with only a 4.5% vacancy rate, but the market strength is, quote, weak. So there's a – it's a part of L.A. Is it a single family or a multifamily? Jessica, is that a single family property? Uh, it's hard to do this live time. Uh, uh, but go ahead, go ahead and type that in, and we may move on to a uh, – oh, she says it's a condo. It is a condo. So, again, um, you know, there, as I said, there's about eight different factors, and, and the other factors might have outweighed and uh, swayed, uh, you know, the strength factor. Uh, how far we have to go out and uh, and find and search like type comparables and and the vacancy and the um, obviously the uh, supply and demand factors are are big but uh, again I'd have to see the exact uh, report and all of the other variables to to kind of okay. give you a good answer on that great one. and um, Jessica what you can do is um, if you want to if you pulled that advanced rent range report uh, and you want to email it to me um, uh, I can send it over to um, I can send it over to Eric, and we can get you a little bit more clarification um, on that. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, okay, question from Colvin uh, is asking for uh, the information on a specific property address. So, Colvin, okay, so what you're going to do is just go to um, maverickinvestorgroup.com backslash rent range and go ahead and enter your information, confirm your email, and then you're going to be able to enter that information yourself and pull up this report yourself so you'll be able to have it for that address you were asking about. Um, Eric, next question. Do you have data on Canadian addresses? Uh, at this time, we do not have data on Canadian addresses, but uh, it's something that we're looking into, and uh, we have been asked by quite a few Canadian investors to uh, to start exploration. So that is uh, an evolving opportunity for us. Okay, great. Uh, next question. Can you explain more specifically uh, what you mean by a black box solution and the distinction between rent range and uh, Zillow? Sure. A black box solution basically is one that the underlying algorithms, codes, uh, you know, where the data originates from and the balancing of the results um, is not able to be shared in the open public. And uh, again, that, that, Kind of is, uh, you know, the way that the, the, the Zillows of the world operate. They, they really don't have any immediate play uh, in the B2B space uh, that we're playing in. We really never go head-to-head -head, uh, on that front uh, because they can't pass the validation process of, you know, we, we use no uh, screen scrapers or bots. Everything that we have is licensed information uh, directly from the sources. And, uh, you know, we disclose that to, you know, our, our top-tier clients and, you know, we make warranties and reps uh, that make that, uh, uh, make that stand out. So, again, with a, with a black box, you don't have those luxuries and you don't have the ability to understand how they got to the number 
and why they, you know, uh, came up with specific values or even the, the content that was provided to, to generate those figures. Got it. Okay. Um, Rhonda says, unable to get the report, web page is not showing up. Um, Rhonda, uh, it should be because other folks are getting it. Um, maybe try typing it again, maverickinvestorgroup.com backslash rent range. Um, if it's not coming up, I'll just send you, uh, I can just email you a link, um, e email you the link after the uh, webinar if there's uh, an issue. But I would say just try typing it again, open up a new browser and type it in because it's working for other folks. Um, okay, additional questions for Eric. Now is the time. We've got him uh, only for this evening. He's just going to be here for a couple more minutes. So uh, if there are more questions for Eric, uh, go ahead and uh, drop them in now. Um, uh, question is, next question is, um, do you have or are you developing a rental saturation analysis for the local property radius? We are uh, in the process of doing two different things. Uh, one is we are looking at a zip level vacancy rate, and we are also looking at a zip level saturation factor. So those are products that are in the tank right now being uh, vetted through and, uh, you know, working through the process. And we estimate that within the next 45 to 60 days at the most, uh, they will be available. But uh, there's not enough information, you know, uh, granular information, uh, you know, at the radius level to kind of have a high level of confidence. So we are going to move from the MSA level down to the zip uh, where we do feel that we have enough, uh, enough information to, uh, you know, to provide some, some very defendable results. Great. Okay. It um, uh, looks like Dennis just pulled up a report and he's asking, what, what does a confidence score of 92% mean? <laughs> well, a confidence score of 92 means that uh, it's consistent quality and quantity of the data characteristics. That means there's lots of comps. Uh, there's a pretty tight, uh, you know, geographic radius, and the um, information that is available, um, you know, really gets us to a point where we're able to, uh, you know, say that, uh, uh, you know, with a high likelihood, you know, we're plus or minus, let's just use a number, um, let's, we're plus or minus, uh, it was a 92, so we're plus or minus 8%, uh, you know, accuracy to that specific uh, property's true value, true rental value. So, yeah, that was a good combination of, uh, of information and like-type properties and, and comparables that were uh, located right within the immediate vicinity. Okay. Um, the next question is about uh, trying to pull a report for a two-unit rental property in Chicago. On one side uh, of the duplex, uh, it's a five-bed, two-bath. On the other side, it's a two-bedroom, one-bath. Um, so uh, the question is about what's the way to accurately get a report generated for that property. Yeah, that's a great question. I would, um, you know, what's necessary is uh, to be able to take both standardized addresses and the characteristics and create two reports. Um, so in that case, you'd have two unique addresses, unit A and unit B. You would need to run them individually with those characteristics and create two advanced reports, and each would come out with differing results, um, you know, based on the comps and based on the bedrooms. Uh, you would get back those individual results. Okay. So, so you go you go to the the place where you enter in, and you need to pull two separate rent range reports, one for each side. So you'd enter in for the first one. Let's see here with your numbers. It would be you'd enter five beds, you'd enter two baths, um, and then you would enter in the you know the street address and the zip code and all that stuff. And you would run one report for that, and then you would need to run a separate report for the property on the other side with this, putting in the separate address, you know, unit whatever it is. Um, and this in the separate number of baths and the separate number of beds. So those would need to be run separately uh, on the multi-unit properties. And I would I would add the fact that um, make sure that you choose apartment condo townhome uh, because the uh, engine for single family is just single family detached properties only. Every other property type would be classified as apartment condo townhome classification. So make sure you're using the right engine. Absolutely, yeah. That's uh, that's also important for uh, for the accuracy there. Great. Okay. Well, what I want to do is uh, bring this uh, to a conclusion. Uh, I want to thank you very much for. Well, let's see. Actually, uh, let me see if there's one more question here. 
Okay, so okay, so sorry. Um, we do have one more question here, uh, Eric. They're asking if the true r rental value um, is based off of uh, the automatic rent estimate or the average rent in the zip code. Which number should they be looking at? Um, so the true rental value on the advance report that comes back that you want to go is the automated rent estimate. That's in the rental market intelligence section. Right. Okay. Great. Um, Great, and then um, one more question about um, do you you mentioned about a, a package uh, option where people could uh, buy credits in bulk. Um, can you um, mention that again and discuss uh, those prices again? Sure. Um, available on the website when you log in. Uh, you know, once you register for your account and uh, uh, you know, get your, your yourself established, there's uh, an add credits button in the top right hand corner. And you can purchase up to 999 credits uh, online with a credit card uh, right there. And you can, uh, obviously, uh, your credit cost will go dependent on the volume, ranging from $3 uh, down to $1.25, uh, depending on, uh, you know, the total number. Uh, again, the more, the more the volume, the more the discount. Uh, and those credits do not expire. They'll sit in your account, and you can draw on them for, you know, eternal time. They will be there. And... Uh, you know they do not expire, so uh, that is the simplest way to uh, to make that happen. Again, when you log in, you get your first four, but once those are gone, you'll have to use the add credits button, uh, and then to pick and choose your uh, your bundle. And uh, there's a credit card option online. Fantastic. All right. Well, we're going to leave it uh, there. We're going to let you guys go a little early tonight. We're bringing it in. Uh, it's almost 10 minutes before the hour. So uh, I want to thank uh, Eric very much for being here tonight uh, for all of the uh, information. And uh, it looks like a lot of folks have been uh, uh, jumping on here, downloading the advanced report. And uh, I've got a lot of comments coming in about uh, the people are, are impressed. They find it valuable and, and so forth. So I uh, want to thank you very much for uh, making that offering to our community tonight. Great. Thank you for having me. Have a great night, everybody.